Roy Hodgson went on to join Crystal Palace as a youth team player in the early 1960s and only now does he walk out of the tunnel at Selhurst Park in charge of the team that he has always supported. Yeah, it was quite positive. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't particularly negative, my impression of the squad, but it was coming in at a very difficult time, especially when we lost that opening game, uh, the home game. I didn't start work. I, I was appointed on the Monday, but uh, for various reasons, I didn't have a chance to start work with the team until the Thursday. So we only had one, one full day and a sort of a, a match day minus one day to prepare the team. Uh, so at that stage, we didn't really feel we knew as much as we should about the team and then followed the two games against the two big Manchester Giants and we lost those two. But I think the interesting thing during that period was that the players, despite the, the results that they were struggling with and the criticism and the comments about seven games and no points and no goals, etc., I thought that their attitude on the training field even then was good. Um, so I just think that we, we established a way of working with the players who were here. It wasn't difficult to establish that way of working. We didn't have any real dissenters saying, we don't like the way you're going about it or we don't like the way you're asking us to play. So it really was just a question of chipping away and working away day after day, trying to improve our performances and try to improve our understanding of what we wanted to do, of course but also hopefully that would give us some improvement in performances, which in fact it did. And uh, then we were able to bat off a little bit the, you know, the minor successes. And I thought we got stronger and stronger as the, year, as the year went on. But even the first impressions were not negative. No goals all season and then two and a half against the and champions. Really the first goal I think was a somewhat fortunate one or close range from Yohan Kabai. But in the end, I thought we did, we, they equalised quickly, but in the end, I think we deserved to win it. Uh, there was no real complaints from Chelsea. And what it did, it got us some points on the board and it got us away from that constant lament. No goals, no points, uh, record number of defeats in a row, etc, etc, etc. We broke the duck, as it were, and from then onwards, at least, we felt we are capable, we are capable of doing something here. And of course, we are helped at Sellers Park by the atmosphere, by the proximity of the crowd to the pitch and by their enthusiasm. They don't, they don't throw the towel in early doors. They, they, they expect the team to keep going, as do we, but they in turn, they keep going too. So, however, Whatever the scoreline, as long as you're fighting here, you always feel you've got a bit of a chance. We were getting ourselves going. We were moving absolutely in the right direction. And we always said when we came in, Ray and I, we came in together, that it's going to be in the, in the spring, if anything, that we managed to haul ourselves up with the others. We're not going to do it overnight because, you know, it's unrealistic for teams outside of the really top teams in the league to think we're going to win four or five in a row and put these seven games behind us. We always knew there'd be wins, losses and draws. And if we could keep that balance between wins, losses and draws and work steadily, by the time the spring came, March time, let's say, then we thought we'd be up there with the others. And then the, the last six or seven games would decide do we keep our head above the water or do we, do we sink uh, beneath the water? Of course, we, we started to climb quicker than we anticipated, but then suddenly we got that injury crisis which plunged us back again, really. We thought we were actually getting away from there. I think we actually moved out the relegation zone you know, around the Christmas period, which was much, much quicker than we thought we'd be able to do. But then come all the injuries and long-term injuries and it was difficult because it plunged us back down again but luckily we got some people back uh, not least of all you know Wilf uh, who had been out for a while and then Ruben Loftus-Cheek towards the end and bringing that quality back into your team makes a big difference. 
think there was there were, there were several. I can, I think one of them, funny enough, was was the Man United game that we lost by three goals to two with that one to go in the last minute. I thought the performance that day against the top team was was very good. But then we had some really good performances towards the end. I mean, fun enough, both performances against Leicester, both home and away, were were really good. Um, I thought the Stoke game as well, which was a tough game really to go up there. We still weren't. 100% certain of maintaining our status and Stoke had to win that game and they're an experienced team with a lot of experienced players. I thought our performance up there that day was as good as I could have expected it to be. But there were lots, there were lots of games last year. There were some very exciting ones, ones where we relied upon a bit of Wilf magic at the end of the game to, to win it for us. But the longer the season went on, there were some very solid performances with good all-round team performances. And certainly in that last period, I'd put Leicester and, and Stoke and even West Brom in that category. We started so well, we got a very good result. And yet, strangely enough, the, the next two performances after the Fulham game against Liverpool and Watford were, were, were in no way inferior to the, to the Fulham performance, but we got nothing out of those games. And then, of course, come Saturday when we had high hopes of getting our second victory and we didn't play well enough to do so. So it's not been the start we wanted, that's for sure, but you're right to say that the margins are small and the difference really between us having three points or at least five are our hair fine, but that's what we've got to come to terms with and we've got to be aware that in each and every game we play, we are capable of getting a result, even against the Man Cities and the, the Chelsea's and the Arsenal's and the Man United's and the Tottenham's. We, we're not out of the reckoning when it comes to getting a result, um, but on the other hand, you're never out of the reckoning either when it comes to a defeat, even against the teams around you or the teams that are newly promoted that people don't expect uh, to get results against you because the league is a very competitive one and each team now has got a lot of money to spend. So, for example, you get a team like Wolverhampton Wanderers and Fulham, they come back in the league and one spends 110 million, the other one spends 60, 70 or 80 million after having invested the year before to get up anyway in the case of Wolves. So as a result, you know, you're not really meeting a team that's particularly inferior to you because they've got the money and the wherewithal to bring in the type of players who will keep them in the league and maybe even see them do one in them. Obviously it's my birthplace and I, I lived there, went to school there and everything really until I got married there. And, didn't leave until I was, well I left the first time for two years to go and play football abroad in, in 1973 um, and then came back for a year and then left again in 1976. So really you could say almost from 1947 to 76, uh, that's, that's where I lived. So I suppose it is a, a little bit of a surprise because, you know, leaving the country uh, and, and the town of my birth when I was 29 and then not really coming back now before I was 69, that 40 years passed, albeit that we've had still lots of contact with the, with the town. Uh, my son lived there for a period of time, my sister of course was, has lived there, my, my parents lived there before they died, so it was never far from my thoughts or but in terms of actually living or working in Croydon, it, uh, it was a, a big gap. So it did come as a bit of a surprise, but a very pleasant one. And it is a great honour, I think, to be given the freedom of the town or the city where you were, you were born. And I'm looking forward to, to receiving that honour in December, I think it is now.